So in our last exercise, we talked about taking the sound up to the top and being willing to make an ugly sound, a nasty sound, brighten it as much as you can to release some of that subglottal pressure, right? The pressure and the tension that often accompanies us to the top. Now we're gonna talk about how to make a more balanced sound. If you remember, I equated that balance, that adding the darkness in, up to salt in cooking. So you can add a little bit of salt, activates the flavors, but if you add too much, it can quickly destroy something, and there's really no way to fix that. So if you've over-darkened the sound and you're up on a high note with an over-darkened sound, it's really tough to fix that, especially in real time as you're singing, okay? So here's a trick we can use to find out what to do to balance the sound and add slowly that space. You're gonna start in the front, make an ugly sound, like a buzzer at a basketball game. Palette is low, it's all shoved through the nose. This is not something you're gonna use in normal singing, but we need to start here to know what it feels like to mix, okay? So you're gonna go, now this, that's already lifted, that's not ugly enough. That's the sound we're looking for, okay? You gotta be willing to make it ugly. Now what you're gonna slowly do is lift that palate. If you go back to the video entitled Good Smell Breath, that will help you figure out how to do that well, okay? So, you didn't even know what vowel I was singing probably until I added the space. I don't know if I knew either. So I'm gonna add that space, I'm gonna lift, 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 just to the point where the sound naturally starts to vibrate and where I feel still no pressure here, but I feel a sense of balance and of ease in the sound. This, eh, although it's easy, I don't like it aesthetically, so I'm gonna try to meet it where I like the sound, but I still feel no pressure, okay? Listen to what happens when I go too far. Eh, all of a sudden there's flex right here. I feel these muscles start to tighten and pinch as things are pulling down. That feels a little bit uncomfortable, okay? There's a lot of space in that sound, but I've overcorrected, okay? So let's try this a little higher. Even there, did you hear that little flex? I was flexing my vocal tract. That made it kind of rigid, kind of like before you yawn. It's really hard to avoid this sometimes. So you have to guide it very gently. And remember, the name of the game is only as much as you need, no more. straight tone too if you want, either way. But if the vibrato is there, remember, that's an indication the muscles are relaxed enough to vibrate. If they're vibrating, they're happy. Things are good, generally, right? Okay, so now you can take that up to the top. If we're going to the top, you hear me cycle through those different versions? Some are more expensive than others, some I feel a whole lot more down here, but hopefully you can hear the difference in those sounds. That's simply me adjusting, and by the way, we're adjusting in, in such a small way. It feels huge to us, but it's a really small distance those muscles are traveling, okay? What you're adjusting is that mix, that mix of sound. So that's gonna help you up on top to navigate some of those things. Okay, now say you're thinking to yourself, I can't go up there even with a really nasty sound. I can't even get up there. Go back to some of those exercises that we talked about before that are called the partial occlusion exercises. Remember, those are the ones where there's some sort of contact as you're singing. So a buzz, a hum, the ng sound, even singing through a straw or a trill. Anything that helps to just take a little bit of pressure off those, those uh, vocal cords, right? The mechanism here, okay? As you're traveling to the top part of the range, if you're not able to sing open, full voice, some of those things, even with an ugly sound, try some of those partial occlusion exercises first and see if you can find success. If those still feel tight to you or you're not getting the sound you want, time to take another closer look at this musculature here and maybe at alignment or possibly breath. It's hard to know, of course, without being in the room. So some of that is gonna have to be self-diagnosis and then you can go back to some of those key points but you should be able to navigate with any of those buzzes, hums, anything like that up there. Slowly progress to your ugly sound, make your ugly sound, experiment, see what kind of sounds you can make up there. And then start to slowly introduce a little bit of that scudo factor. Now some singers prefer more of that in their sound. They love that dark, rich sound. That's great. Mix your sound like you want to, as long as it's sustainable. If it hurts you, if you're getting tired too fast, you're probably gonna have to make a modification in your sound. 
Even if you love the tone, even if you love the sound, if it's too expensive and you can't continue to sing in that way, it's probably not viable, it's probably not worth it. So there is always balance. Different kinds of music are going to require slightly different sounds. You're going to sing Verdi one way, you're going to sing Mozart a slightly different way. All of those things, though, should have that foundational technique with slight changes in terms of those aesthetics. Now that gets into a really complex world. For now, just concentrate on what you can adjust and playing around with those different levels of resonance and of sound, of what you're getting, of what you're hearing, of what you're feeling most of all. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.